Hello, welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is our modern playbook top 10 spec list. Let's get this party started. For number 10, we have New Avengers number 11. Rich, what do you have on this? In the guts of this book is the first appearance of Maya Lopez as Ronin. Um, most of our viewers and our board um, know her as Echo. Um, this book, it was heavily ordered by retailers. You know, these books are selling for 12 to $20 with an average of about $15 online in the wild. They're in dollar bins still um, with with Echo, you know, confirmed for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, also on top of that, Ronin's already set a precedent in the MCU um, with uh, Endgame, uh, Clint Barton. I think it could be just a matter of time before we see Echo become Ronin in the MCU. What do you think, Ultra? Well, it's about as complex as the appearances of Ronin in New Avengers because uh, th this story was so well thought out in advance that they knew where they were going to place the character as like a chess piece move. And they knew at the end it was eventually going to be Clint Barton, but they had to have Maya step in. I, and I can't remember exactly if it was to confuse people into thinking Clint wasn't Ronin. I think that was part of the part of the reason why she was in the suit. Right. But I, I want to remind everybody there's multiple cover appearances before the guts. Now, the guts in this one is probably going to you know, be one of the reasons why it may see an upswing. But if, for you Ronin chasers, if you guys missed the initial wave of Ronin news, those books are in a lull. And if you're a fan of the Ronin character, well, New Avengers 1 has multiple variants with them on it, including the second print. Uh, and then the variant cover for issue number four, which is also the first appearance of Maria Hill, uh, is also another cover appearance of Ronin. So hedge your bets. If you're, if you're hedging bets on Ronin and, and all the different spec there, that's, those are all books you want to be picking up. But if you're into the Maya Lopez and Echo, uh, you could probably forego all those. And just to let you guys know, there are new stand copies of this book. Um, I have found two in the wild. So keep your eye out for the new stand copies. All treat. right. For our number nine book, we have Peter Parker, Spider-Man number 35. I believe this is a Mighty Mel V pick. Ultra, what do you think about this book? Okay, um, I read this book, and uh, for the moment, we, we need to have a moment of seriousness and, and talk about, you know, kids who are unfortunately living in subpar conditions. And, and this book, if you read it, 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 if you know, if it doesn't pull at your heartstrings, you're, you're probably, you know, you need to evaluate yourself because... We got a, a dark book here. I mean, it's 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 dark and story wise, but but the the light at the, is the end of the page, which does show an, yet another uh, African American Spider Man, which I think is a fantastic thing for for readers, and people probably want to know about this. And it's a cheap buy in, but the story itself is what I want people to really take away from it. Um, there's a, a basically a, a underprivileged kid who has a mother who's got a little bit of an addiction problem and doesn't exactly have the, the nicest of, uh, you know, father figures in his life at the moment. And uh, it ends up, uh, you know, with the loss of his mother and Spider-Man was basically how he escaped and dealt with this kid. You know, whenever there would be anybody screaming or anything like that would run to his room grab his little Spider-Man trading card. And every time he grabbed that card, Spider-Man would show up and talk to him. And Spider-Man was his best friend. So I, I really think that uh, this book should just be looked at and appreciated for those reasons, not necessarily how much money it's going to garnish. If it does see an upswing in value, I want it to be on its merits. So, and it's a fantastic pick, but dark story for sure. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we, we need to experience some of this in order to, to really appreciate the light. For number eight, we have Marvel Voices number one. Ultra, what's up with this book? Okay, so uh, we have a pre-COVID Marvel Voices that had the, the wonderful variants like the Steel Freeze, uh, Barbershop variant, and a couple of the other ones. Uh, and then, do I mean, that book was released right before we experienced the shutdown. So Marvel, during the shutdown, I guess, when, when things were starting to open back up, decided to re-release this content but add additional stuff to it. Uh, they did with this cover here, which is obviously a Miles Morales cover. 
uh, and, and just to supplement the the Miles Morales cover on the newest Marvel Voices Legacy that just came out, um, there's a lot of really good storytelling going on inside this book. And this version actually has additional material not included with the previous version. Uh, this I've watched this book on an upswing. Um, this book was able to be obtained for eight bucks shipped uh, three to four weeks ago. And then when Marvel Voices hit, people started searching for it and maybe have accidentally purchased this one or they wanted to, to read the other stories that were available in the Marvel Voices books. Uh, and this one I've started to notice is creeping up towards the $15, $20 range right now. So uh, it might be a good pickup in the LCS if you can find them in the back issue bins. For number seven, we have Wolverine number one from 1988, the first monthly series. Rich, what's up with this book? This was a no brainer to me. Um, you know, like you said, from 1988, this is actually Wolverine's first solo ongoing series. So after the the limited series, um, you mean the one was, sitting behind your wall, uh, your head on the it, wall? Yeah, exactly. And you know, in in the guts of this book, um, you have the, the 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 debut of the Black Wolverine costume, um, and then on top of that, you have the first time in story that he is he is shown as patch um which is wolverine with an eye patch this book like i said is criminally inexpensive i mean if you're priced out of uh you know incredible hulk 180 181 uh gsx uh, uh one or even x-men 94 um you move on to the first solo story for solo titles and then you know you come to this one i think this is a great bargain i've seen Personally, near mint copies of this book sell as low as forty dollars. You know, highs in in the eighty ish with a, an average of about fifty to sixty bucks. I think this is a great book to invest in. I think it has long term potential, and I think it's very important for for Wolverine, Logan, and the whole patch uh, investment uh, uh, bucket, so to speak. Um, yeah. If you are, I mean, if you are a Wolverine uh, investor or collector, you must have this book. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, it's an important Wolverine book. I'll just say I've got a few of these. These books pick up st spine kicks like it's nobody's business. I mean, this book in high grade is not easy. Uh, the paper picked up like crazy. But, yeah, it's a good pick, uh, an important Wolverine book. Uh, you should definitely have one. I read my Wolverine number one more times than Doctor Strange looked at possible futures in Infinity War. And, you know, it's also a, re a really tough 9-8, like Ben was saying. Uh, not to mention there are, I believe there is a Canadian price variant for this. You could double check that, but I believe there is a Canadian price variant. And, of course, the newsstand. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a great pick. Great wraparound cover. Great uh, Chris Claremont story. Let's move on to number six. Tales of Suspense, number 75. Ben, what's up with this book? All right. I'm really excited this book made the cut. Um Listen, anybody who knows me, I am not a Silver Age guy, right? I, I live and breathe moderns, uh, but this Silver Age belongs firmly in the modern camp. So what we have in this book is the first appearance of Sharon Carter, Agent 13, um, first appearance of Batroc the Lure, and the first cameo of Peggy Carter. So an, an important book that, that, that is, can be had for $50, $60, so it's not expensive. Um, what really drew me to this was, was with Sharon Carter. Um, it was a character that I really uh, enjoyed um, in the MCU and the Captain America arc. And she is going to be uh, front and center um, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, she's featured in all six episodes. Um, she's being featured on posters. And I think a character that they're going to run, run with for a while. Um, so um, uh, a Silver Age book that could be had for relatively cheap with a few other really important first appearances in it uh, seems like a really smart buy. So um, if you see these out there, I think they're worth grabbing now because I think if, if Sharon hits, these books are going to be out of reach pretty quickly. For number five, we have X-Men number five, New Stand Edition. Ben, what do you have on this? All right. So listen, when it comes to, listen, I was a kid of collecting in the 90s. <laughs> And I, and I know how many of these books were printed. So when it comes to books um, in the 90s, I always, at this point in my life, lean towards newsstand. So that's where the newsstand angle comes here. 
Um, I'm going to challenge everybody on this book a little bit. Uh, Omega Red, um, by all accounts, um, is going to show up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, there's been a number of different leaks um, that point to that. By no means guaranteed, but it seems like it may happen. Um, he is um, a super soldier, and I think that's going to be a thread that ties that entire series together. Um, the book that everybody's been throwing big money at is um, X-Men number four. Um, you know, I read that recently, and it felt to me very much like a cameo. does appear on a few different panels. There's a big reveal. He says he's Omega Red. Um, but this book, with him being on the cover and having a much bigger contribution to the guts... Um, feels like a really smart buy. Um, when it comes to modern comics, um, you know, very much of the camp. Maybe it's not one book, it's a couple of books. And um, this one can be had for relatively cheap. Um, the newsstand is a bit trickier to track down, um, but uh, a relatively cheap buy-in for a book that I think um, is important. I know Ultra's got a different point of view. Before I hand it over to him, I do want to point out Maverick is in this book. That's not the spec, but he is an he is an important um, character in the X Men lore, and he makes his first appearance in, in this particular issue. And and you are correct. So, if you're an Omega Red Chaser, you have the regular one of the four connecting covers that has the Omega Red centerfold in it. That was you the also, uh, Wolverine and the Wolverine and Cyclops was the correct. Was the, and th and then you have the deluxe edition, which has all the pinups from all the four books in it, and the gatefold cover. So th those are the two cameos for Omega Red in X Men number one. And then you're going to have X Men number four, which has him. You know, it's from Omega Red's point of view, looking at Wolverine. You see his tentacles and and the pages internally. But this is Omega Red's first full cover. I'll give I'll give him that. Uh, but I too am a product of the 1990s, and I love the relationship that was just explored in the recent issues of Wolverine with Maverick returning to the pages. And I think that's probably more the reason why I'm seeing more sales of this book than I am versus the Omega Red stuff. But I would be excited to see Omega Red show up at Fal Falcon and Winter Soldier. For number four, we have Ultimate All New Spider Man number five. This is another Mighty Mel V. Uh, pick. He wants to give credit to Batcave Comics. Ben, what do you have on this? Yeah, so this is the issue where we see Miles in his uh, traditional uh, Spider-Man costume. Um, so it, it's a book that um, is is highly sought after, but not particularly expensive at the moment. Um, it's worth pointing out that I believe he shows up in this costume on the cover of every issue up until this point. But this is where he gets it in the guts. This story also flashes back to just after Ultimate Fallout 4, um, which also makes it particularly interesting. But, you know, you know, I, I had a conversation with Mel just recently. I think Miles is going to be the biggest thing in comics for a while. And this is a really important book for him. For number three, we have Marvel Premiere number 47. Rich, what's going on with this book? So, um, higher price ticket here with Marvel Career 47. Now, on the cover and in the guts is your first appearance of Scott Lang becoming, becoming the, uh, the MCU Ant-Man, or we'll say Ant-Man. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I'll, I'll clue you in. This also is the first appearance of his daughter, Cassie Lang. Um, comic book readers know her as Stature and Stinger later. Um, I think this book is criminally undervalued, and I think it has some long-term legs. I think Ant-Man is an underrated movie. It's hilarious. I, every time I watch it, it's almost like, you know, it's like, why? Why haven't I watched, watched this more? And um, I think the casting of Ant-Man um, in the MCU was, was brilliant. Uh, this book right now, I, I've I've been seeing copies fly off online and I've seen them on the walls at LCS is high grade copies for as low as 75 bucks is as high as 150, but selling at an average of around right around 90 to a hundred dollars. Now nine eights are going for about five fifty to $600, which it, 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 it's, it's, it's up there, but it's, it, it's surprisingly low compared to how much, Ant-Man means to the MCU in the past and to the future. Um, you know, on top of that, uh, the person that wrote this book is uh, 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 David Michelini, 
And uh, what's cool about uh, David Michelini is, is that, you know, he also created Scott Lang in Avengers 181, which came out like, I think a few weeks before this book. Um, he created Scott Lang and his first appearance was in Avengers 181. And, and that's an important book as well. And making him into a whole different uh, comic run or comic title in the Marvel, Marvel premiere, making him the new Ant-Man and then having a daughter that is important into comics in the modern age era just tells me how important this book was from the beginning. I think this book has tremendous legs and I think this is a great investment at this price point. Yeah, great pick. I mean, I love Paul Rudd um, as Ant-Man in the MCU. Uh, you know, he is a disrespected character. This book is somewhat disrespected, so they kind of go hand in hand. Um, I think it's an important book. I've got it. I love it. Great pick, Richie. Let's move on to our number two book, which is our, uh, which is Star Wars, Darth Vader, Doctor Aphra, John Tyler Christopher action pair and action figure variant. Ultra, what do you have on this? Well, this is one of my specialties. Of course, I, I, I'm the only person, I think, still buying these, but apparently not. Um, his, his exclusives seem to be doing well. But this thing right here was an open order Dr. Afro variant. And this was also the final issue of Darth Vader's Volume 1. So Marvel at this time had fatigued <laughs> a lot of people with these action figure variants and like hardcore collectors like myself were probably the few people who were like, Hey, still give them to me every month. So I was still chasing these at the time, but there, there weren't a whole lot of them available on shelves at multiple stores. It's Dr. Afra's action figure variant. So there, there isn't another one that actually happens before this. Yeah. She's got cover appearances and stuff like that, but I've noticed some trends as I'm putting together my complete run of these things the very popular characters the ones that have you know followings you can tell because their variants are either commanding more money or are non-existent on the market so think about that but these are still in are still in your back issue bins at some of your stores uh there are probably some st stashed away in people's collections and it it's still right now a pretty decent for a cover price buy-in initially and a lot of those people that maybe bought it at a cover price might want to get them to market it may not go skyrocket, but it's still got growth potential uh, as Dr. Afra starts to gain more popularity. Yeah, you know, I also touched on a really, really important um, idea in collecting um, these thematic covers. There is a fatigue that sets in from the retailers where they stop buying them, whether it be Scotty Young, whether it's action figure, whether it was hip hop, whatever it was retailers just didn't order as many of them because they weren't moving as much because there were too many of them that creates some scarcity value and makes these um collectible so um you know important idea to keep in uh keep in mind and um yeah this is a great book i love it good pick great stuff all right for our number one book we have mighty Morphin power rangers number one rich what do you have on this yeah, Aaron, uh, Saban, uh, Saban's, excuse me, Saban's uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number one. Um, this is part of the six issue limited series ending with uh, Marvel taking over the license of the property, if you don't remember. Um, in the guts, I guess you could say, and the covers, the first full appearance of the Power Rangers in an actual traditional comic book. Um, in this same series, I think it's, I believe it's issue number four, you have the first appearance of the White Ranger. So not to be confused with the free comic book day book. This is the book to be had, first solo title, uh, so to speak. Um, recent sales of this book have been, you know, confirmed uh, between 8 to $15 with an average of around $12. $12. I think this, with with the movie reboot that was announced in December of uh, 2019, if it's still happening, I think this is a no-brainer, especially with uh, how how popular uh, Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers have become over the last few months uh, with the recent uh, Momoko covers and the Green Ranger uh, reveal and origin. Um, you know, they they're hot right now. I mean, I, I, I know Ultra could could add to this. Well, Hasbro now owns these guys. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. They're in the same realm as Transformers, but we never know what they're going to do. I actually like the last reboot. Like, I, I even went out and bought the Steelbook because I thought it was so good. Um, 
so I'm actually excited to see what Hasbro is going to do with this property, especially let's, let's be honest about it. Hasbro is, is a pretty big corporation that has enough funding to make sure that their movies get made uh, to their standards. And they, they also, they, they're like very much involved with how their movies get made, but this property, this property is going nowhere. And, and again, you know, if you may have missed out on, on their, you know, the, the Sentai two, this is still a book that a lot of people are going to chase because like the Wolverine number one on this list, you know, the Sentai would, I guess, be considered their their Hulk 181-ish, and this would be the Wolverine number one for their first ongoing, or for first miniseries. So, um, cool stuff in the miniseries, though, and, and it's just still a very good pickup, and right now, uh, not very many high-grade copies I, I see available, so that, that may also be something, as you guys are looking for them, even if you're not necessarily a Power Rangers collector, if you are finding these and bringing them to market in high grade, you're, you're going to be definitely having a book that's going to move. Nostalgia is as strong as ever right now. And Power Rangers sort of hits all the notes. So a um, really good pick up here, I think. Great stuff. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to catch Comic Book Women tonight. And we'll have a roundtable for Thursday. Peace.